every minute that we waste, more innocent lives are massacred. It's the biggest injustice of our lifetime. And the least thing we can do is make ourselves uncomfortable in solidarity and, and plead to the world to find our, our humanity and to, to end this injustice. So what you're seeing there is just a little bit of footage from the many protests that have been obviously ongoing for many weeks now, but they have not slacked off literally at all around the world. Tens of thousands, far more people marching, either large marches, speeches, gatherings, demonstrations like you saw and tend to make clear the devastation that is ongoing. Literally as we broadcast this right now, the military operation continuing in all of its obvious barbarity. The death toll inside of Palestine has now soared past 10,000. Obviously, depending on who you talk to, the number is going to be different. But nobody can deny that this is an absolutely apocalyptic death toll, both at large and also specifically the number of Palestinian children that have been killed during the ongoing violence that despite uh, international condemnation, more so than condemnation coming specifically from the US government, shows no sign of stopping. And it is possible that the worst is still to come. It is at very least good to see that people are letting their voices be heard. They understand what's happening, despite the mainstream media often having a particular spin on these sorts of stories historically. And so it is good to see that people are you know, making making good on their values and not being mm-hmm. quiet about what we continue to see. Um, Francesca, I know that you've been talking a lot about this uh, while I was gone on family leave. Uh, what do you think about these protests and this dark milestone of more than 10,000 dead? I mean, it, it, is, it is so grim and yet that was the biggest march for Palestinian human rights in American history in DC over the weekend. So at once, it's incredibly depressing and also heartening that at least the people, not our leaders, understand what is going on. And the other thing that happened simultaneous is that Netanyahu was basically like, uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Blinken, you know, for the whole like humanitarian pause suggestion. I'm gonna go with no. So you're absolutely right. This shows no sign of slowing down. In fact, it is ramping up and there will be even more of a ground incursion into Gaza. 10,000 dead. You're looking at by a lot of estimates that when, if and when the territory is reclaimed by Israel, there could be as many as 25 to 30,000 people killed, to say nothing of those displaced. Those who are dying of hunger right now, of thirst, the cancer ward, y'all, you know, in a hospital in Gaza, the pediatric cancer ward was targeted by Israel over the weekend. I mean, the depravity. Just as soon as you think, no, 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 it doesn't get worse than this, it gets worse. It gets more depraved, as if somehow this is still an act of self-defense. So, I mean, I, I, I'm, I am so broken and it's so hard, John, because before when I would produce it, I could cry sort of as I was producing, get very upset. And now I have to like, you know, get live. hit with it live on air. So uh, yeah. apologies in advance, but it is yeah. very intense. Hundred um, percent. Yeah, I'm glad that you pointed out. Uh, obviously, medical facilities, hospitals, still being targeted. Um, some of you are probably wondering when that is going to come to an end. My dark prediction would be when there are no hospitals remaining in Gaza. That's probably when the hospitals will stop being uh, bombed. Same for refugee centers. I, I saw estimations of, you know, if this 10,000 number is accurate proportionally, what percentage of the population that is, and they estimated it's uh, akin to 1.5 million people being killed in the United States, which is conveniently similar to our COVID death toll. So in the span of just a handful of weeks, it is an effect on the population just in terms of death, let alone injuries, families broken, infrastructure destroyed, and all of what's gonna come from that, akin to the worst domestic like policy public health failure in US history over the course of years, shrunk it down in the span of less than a couple of months. Uh, devastating in a way that is, is hard to actually articulate. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and imagine, even if, let's say, that the calls for a ceasefire or for people who for some reason, I don't understand why, I'm just coming back to the news after three months away, why some people can't say the term ceasefire, humanitarian pause, all this stuff. What is the games that we're playing with rhetoric these days? A ceasefire is what's needed. But even if we had a ceasefire, well, uh, infrastructure of all of all different varieties has been utterly destroyed. Um, there's been effectively uh, no medicine, no food getting in. When you can talk about a couple of dozen trucks making it in as progress, that just goes to show how devastating everything is. Jordan recently airlifted in um, some medical supplies. But even if 
all of it ended right now, you have now locked in untold suffering and deaths from the fact that the infrastructure, especially the medical infrastructure, um, isn't there. So we we have passed this milestone, but we already know that this is just like when we would talk about COVID, it's, it's an almost meaningless number right. because it's just a preview of what we're gonna be talking about in a few weeks or a few months. Absolutely, there's so much to say, and you know, John. The other thing we covered when you were away is that Blinken basically said there's no diplomatic, excuse me, there's no military solution to this. So even Blinken admits there's no military solution to this. And so, what's the answer? The answer is diplomacy. The answer is negotiation. The answer is Hamas reportedly is willing to exchange all of the hostages. This is just new. All the hostages for a ceasefire. Now we have to like triple check that, but like what is being done to save the Israelis and American citizens who are still being held by Hamas? Yeah. Nothing, right? They are again, once again, collateral damage. So this isn't about Israel versus Palestine or what, this is about our leaders. This is about our leaders failing to protect human lives um, and especially being willing to trample Palestinian lives. Yeah. I mean, this could, John, we're gonna talk about blowback in so many years, man, you and I, it sucks, but this is like, we're gonna get into it. you know this is going to define the region and our understanding of it from obviously a progressive, in my opinion, an anti-war perspective. We're gonna have to be dealing with the effects of this for a very long time, domestically, internationally. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, tuck in. Yeah, look, look. Obviously, the the region has been chaotic. There's been violence for a very long time, longer than we've been alive. Everybody knows that. Um, but now, I mean, those prior. Incidents, crises, conflicts just seem so utterly minor compared to what we've already seen, let alone uh, what appears to be coming. This this major operation is still underway. You know, while we were producing, Israeli military said that they had um, cut off Gaza City. I mean, God only knows what's going to come from that. Uh, I, I hadn't seen that about the offer to return the hostages. Obviously, I hope that that can happen because I can only imagine, you know, what people inside of Israel, friends and family members, uh, must be feeling. Just the the hope that those hostages might still be alive, the fear, perhaps, if it occurs to people that those hostages might have been killed by the ceaseless bombing of the Israeli military. Almost certainly, some of that has happened. It's uh, it's almost unthinkable. It's so terrible. But um, but unfortunately, uh, while there have been, you know, we we have these protests. We have, you know, in the UN, major vote. There are people who are trying to to call for a ceasefire, and you can go to ceasefiretoday.com um, for a variety of different resources having to do with this, and hopefully to pressure our U.S. representatives. Uh, to call for a ceasefire. A number have, thankfully. In fact, my representative, Maxine Waters, just did in the last day. There have been some who have. There needs to be far more. Uh, uh, Joe Biden obviously could be doing far more. We're the largest, richest, most powerful country in the history of countries. And we have no influence. We can't, we have no, we have no power. We, we can't actually change the situation at all. We can send a dude and he can go and he can talk to someone and then say, oh, shucks, nothing happened. But I guess that's all we can do. I right. guess that's all that we can hope for to save lives, save lives on both sides, by the way. If that's what you're actually interested in, we could do that, but you don't see much of it. And by the way, this is like the least important part of this story. Um, but if you are Joe Biden, you should also consider the possibility that even if you don't care about the human toll, like politically, uh, registered voters in battleground states trust Trump over Biden on managing the conflict by 11 percentage points, even young voters. So like, even if you don't care about the human toll, like for your own skin, maybe try a little bit harder, try to resolve this thing because it it feels to me like what we've seen in many other cases, Francesca, it feels like just gonna sort of stand back and uh, I hope it doesn't end up too bad because I'm not gonna do anything to actually improve the situation. That That's my fear at this point. Biden's so weak. I mean, it's just so sad how weak he is in this instance. And yeah, while at the same time, here's $14 billion worth of weapons, Israel. But please, humanitarian yeah. pause, no? Okay, you can have it anyway. Yeah, yeah, just a lot about this that I will never understand. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.